Hey, good morning everyone. Uh, a little something different. You see me sitting in the car, so obviously uh, we're, we're going on an adventure today. Um, it is President's Day weekend, and uh, like I said, if you watched the reflection video from yesterday, one of the things I wanted to go out and do is I wanted to shoot a, um, a video of touring historic places, and keeping in the theme of President's Day, I got something for you. We're gonna make a long drive. I gotta check the gas, should be okay. We're gonna try going all the way out to Springfield, Illinois, and checking out the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library and Museum out there. A place I've been wanting to get to for years. Um, today seems like a good day to do it. The wife is at work all day, the kids are gone all day. So uh, it's just me, taking a long car ride. deciding whether or not I wanted to do this today the other option that I had was actually kind of where I'm driving through right now so I'm right on I don't know it's just, I guess just east of East St. Louis kind of like Washington Park area something like that and I'm approaching up uh, like Collinsville Cahokia area over in Illinois and um, one of the places I was going to go to today was going to be the Cahokia Mounds which is actually in kind of right around uh, Collinsville Illinois Fairmont Park, if you got to know where about that's at. Anyways, so I was gonna go there, I was gonna do this whole thing about Native Americans and kind of just inhabiting the area that is St. Louis, and I'm probably gonna do that at some point in time, but I'm using the opportunity, like I said in the intro video, because the wife's not here, the kids aren't here, just to make this long drive out. I've, I've been wanting to go to this presidential museum for a long time. I've heard some really, really great things about it. And if you're listening to this and you're thinking like, presidential museum, that doesn't sound cool at all, Supposedly it's supposed to be pretty good. So that's that's another reason motivating reason for the drive out here. So um, You know we're on the road. I got probably at least another hour probably an hour and 15 ahead of me uh, I'm not that far into Illinois right now. So I will probably just in uh, you know safe driving practices Not check in until we get to Springfield. So uh, with that hopefully uh, Yeah, we'll see you guys out there. All right, made it So I am uh, just parked the car and just walking up towards the museum right now. Uh, kind of as I thought, it's uh, just a little after one o'clock in the afternoon. So, I don't know, not too bad, about an hour and a half drive. Outside of St. Louis, I live down in Maplewood, so not too far away from Forest Park area. And yeah, it was a pretty straight shot. A little construction leaving town, crossing the bridge. Other than that, just nice, smooth, easy drive. So I'm gonna flip this thing around for a little bit. See where we're at. There is, I think, the museum right there. This is probably only about my second time in life ever actually being in Springfield, so I really don't know uh, much about where I'm at. All right, like that. So you guys what you're seeing and experiencing for the first time. I'll tell you what, let's go right over here. Sorry for the wind. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on. All right, so we got us. Historic Union Station is right there, so we get that. Union Square Park is right there. Abraham Lincoln Presidential Museum should be over there. And the Abraham Lincoln Library is up a block. So it looks like we're going. I see a Presidential Library. I'm guessing that's a museum. So I'm gonna shoot for that door right over there. Let's go take a look. Inside the museum now, I'm just kinda, I don't know, taking a look around inside and about to start making my way into getting tickets. 
So I thought, like I said, I would uh, show you guys kind of whatever I see as I'm walking through. This is my first time here, so it's gonna be your first time here as well. First thing I'm noticing is a huge space. So, looking family over there, kind of a log cabin style over there. Uh, this is much more than I thought it was gonna be. So, theater right there, and you know what? Hey, they just said the movie's starting. So let's go ahead and walk in there and see what's going on. Oh, there we go. There's a theater. Alright, so like I said, I'm not going to be able to film this. So like I said, I'm not going to be able to film this in here, but uh, I'm kind of excited to see what this, uh, what the film's going to be about. Alright, so that film just got out. That was amazing. That was, uh, of all the museums that I've been to, that might have been the best film of any topic, of any subject I've ever seen. It was just that good. I mean, this, uh, I can't even begin to describe to you, like, how that went. You'd have, you honestly would have to come up here and see it. It was just that good. Alright, so I'm back out in the main area right now. And it's gonna kind of look around and see some of the stuff I have out here. Like I said, they have the, uh, looks like I'm assuming the family right here, and I'm gonna go check out the log cabin and stuff over there. So I'll check back in. This kind of talks about Abraham Lincoln as a child, and some of the early years. Check out the log cabin thing. It's built right here in the middle of this museum, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a little walk through. I'm assuming it's supposed to be him sitting on the stoop. Son has on here some stuff about Lincoln and about the cabin. And then there's the front door right there, that's where we're heading into next. Stepbrother and a cousin living upstairs. So there's seven people living here, plus a dog. Now, he lived here until he was 21 years old. When he left, you see that girl behind you. He uh, took a job working on barges in the Mississippi River, going down to New Orleans. So when you go into the next room, you'll see a, a picture of slavery as he would have seen it in New Orleans. Also, in the next room is a... Um, Maybe all of museums I've been to, I don't know if I've ever seen a depiction of slavery quite as real as the one that's on display here at the museum. Kind of, you know, walk past kind of what they have here. And this kind of lets you take a look at this and try to get an idea about what this scene is and what's happening in here. Kind of presented to you without commentaries. But you look it over. Just the depictions of, uh, just, I don't know, Lincoln's life through the ages. Well, and now it's like kind of a, like a, I don't know, like a dry goods store, I guess. Where he worked as a young man. I think I remember reading somewhere that he lived in the store. I lived in a little room behind the store at some point in time. It's interesting to kind of get, the, get a feel for what it would look like during his time. Sitting with the, the woman he would later marry, his future wife, Mary Todd Lincoln, probably in her father's house, just asking permission if it was alright to marry him. Swing around. So we were told by one of the people inside this was actually the headstone uh, of one of Abraham Lincoln's children who died. And they actually found this when they were creating or when they were building uh, Springfield High School. And they were excavating and digging in the ground. They found that, you know, and the guy inside the room kind of made the point that if, you know, the Lincolns would have been 
probably the most successful people to come out of the area, so they would have had a headstone. Just imagine how many people had been buried there with no headstones that had just been buried in the ground at the high school, so it's, it's crazy to think about. Taking a look at some of Abraham Lincoln's kind of political stuff. The uh, scene you just saw, the Lincoln Douglas debates, were really some of the more famous works of Abraham Lincoln. These guys were basically like almost like a traveling, um, I don't know, it's not theater, but they would just travel from city to city and debate the issues of the day with each other, and large groups would gather around and just listen to them talk and, and kind of work through and debate these different ideas they were having. I always think so often, not just in American history, but all history, we really forget the human elements of people. Abraham Lincoln, the president, sure, but Abraham Lincoln also the father who, you know, had was raising young boys and had to take these young kids to work with him. So like he's sitting there, you know, working or catching up with the news of the day. You know, he's got two small kids that are going to be doing young kid things. about painted him as a very real person. I'm just kind of going around and I keep coming back to this one part of the museum. It's it's like, it's very dramatic and it's telling. It's uh, the slave scene as Abraham Lincoln would have seen it as he was a child. You know, we have a man and a woman along with their child being split apart, being sold by two different masters and it's very, to me it's very telling and it's very informative and only because it's rare that you see slavery acknowledged in museums. In fact, I'm trying to think of all the museums I've been to, if I've ever really seen slavery, like a dedicated exhibit to what slavery looked like anywhere. And I certainly expected an Abraham Lincoln Museum for them to address the, the issue in, of slavery. I honestly thought they were going to glamorize Abraham Lincoln's involvement in the eradication of slavery. Not so much just the, like here are the glaring statistics, but also like the incredible visual of what slavery looked like. And it's very, like, it's, like, it's, when you see it, it's incredibly, like you feel the, the raw emotion of all the people that are depicted in this scene. It's definitely worth making the trip out just to see that and experience that. checking in um, just finished up the kind of the cabin tour or what was like Lincoln's early days that was back uh, back there behind the security guys so now I'm standing outside of like Lincoln's White House which is uh, obviously gonna be you know Lincoln going leaving Springfield Illinois traveling to Washington DC and spending his time uh, in the White House so it's So as I'm standing in what was one of the bedrooms for Lincoln's children in, uh, in the White House, I'm just, again, I'm struck by how much this museum really focuses on Abraham Lincoln, the person, and not Abraham Lincoln, the, the, the politician, or the, even the president. Like in this scene, you can see like his, um, his child is dying of fever, and Mary Todd Lincoln, the first lady, is, is by his side, and over in the doorway is Abraham Lincoln coming in from the party that was being hosted at the White House for all of Washington's elite. And throughout the party, both Abraham Lincoln and Mary Todd Lincoln are paying visits to their sick child who's dying of fever in, in one of the rooms of the White House. It's, it's really like an emotional, I don't know, it's an emotional scene. Oh, please. 
So look inside Abraham Lincoln in the White House and his cabinet meeting. This is the first reading, it's supposed to represent the first meeting of the uh, Emancipation Proclamation, the document that was going to free all the slaves in the United States. What was interesting about this, obviously, at this time is the United States is split in half, and you can kind of see it on the map right there. There's a line drawn. There you go, you can see it. The line that splits the north and the south. And what makes this interesting is that the, the emancipation was not just going to free the slaves over in the north, it was also going to free the slaves in the south, which at the time, if you would ask somebody living in the south, was not actually a part of the United States. So the scene depicted here from these men are people that are all in Lincoln's cabinet who either, you know, were agreeing with the idea and kind of realized that the time had come, or the people that were adamantly disagreeing with the idea and realized that this was a huge mistake and thought it was a huge mistake and thought that uh, Lincoln's plan would not be successful. And again, just like he points out throughout the entirety of this museum, it's just another example of not focusing just on Lincoln, the political figure, but on Lincoln, the person, having to deal with these real life people and their kind of interactions based on his decisions. Our fathers brought forth upon us a new nation, conceived in liberty, and dedicated to the proposition that all of them created. Now we are in the age of the great civil war, protesting the public families, for an indignation so conceived and so dedicated to the public war. We are now on the great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final first invitation for those who have here made it their lives that that nation might live. It is all together. The, uh, the museum part of it. We started with the log cabin. We walked through the White House and got to see everything um, everything there was to see here. So when I bought the ticket, uh, I got a ticket for the museum. We saw the film, which again was fantastic. Definitely take the opportunity to go see that if you ever have it. Um, but we also bought a ticket to go to the train station, which apparently is across the street. Um, and they're supposed to have, from the movie Lincoln, they're supposed to have some displays, some costumes, some prop pieces, things like that, that were set up from the film. So uh, I'm going to take a walk out of here. There's a gift shop I'm probably going to walk through on the way, just kind of shoot some stuff in there. Um, and then make my way over to the train station and, and check out what's going on over there. So uh, it was awesome. The museum was great. Um, definitely worth the, uh, the hour and a half drive up here. It's, it's so real, and I want to keep talking about this. I think it's done better than any museum I've seen, where it doesn't talk about just the legacy of the, of the accomplishments, right? So the, the Mount Rushmore of Abraham Lincoln, 
or the even the Lincoln Memorial, you know, aspect of it. It was really the person. Like, who was he? Um, how did he relate to his family? Some of the, the trials that he went through, just the struggles he went through, the struggles with uh, uh, freeing the slaves and the opposition that he faced as a result of that. It's really cool, really, really interesting to see that very personal narrative of this museum. So let's go ahead, uh, leave out of here, go check out the uh, the gift shop, and then go see the uh, the museum, not museum, the uh, set pieces and stuff. And then we're gonna take one final walk uh, going through the gift shop area here. It's interesting to find a gift shop of Abraham Lincoln, but we'll just take a look and see what there is to see. Uh, you know, the usual stuff, t-shirts, stickers, coffee cups, um, books, cool, cool, cool. Um, barbecue sauce, that's interesting. A ton of books, it's not surprising. Abe's Raw Honey. Hmm, that's cool. Chocolates. I don't know, it's, an, it's a neat gift shop. I like the, the presidential color scheme. There's some golf balls or jackets, I guess, would be the place to go. If you're really into like slapping around Abraham Lincoln. What? I kind of like that shirt. I'm not sure why. I'm not even sure I get why, but it's pretty cool. More coffee cups. Right? Oh, this I like. So forget everything else. I'm kind of really excited about this. Purchase supports the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library and Museum, so that's not so bad. So anything I buy here is not just profiting some unknown person. It all kind of doubles back and goes to the museum, which is cool. I'm still not going to buy anything, but it is pretty cool that that is the thing they do. you got to really like Abraham Lincoln to put a big old bust of him in your house. It smells fantastic right now. They must have a restaurant or something around here somewhere because it is. It smells so good, and I'm really hungry too, which doesn't help. Bunch of candy, that's pretty tempting. Old candy, that's what I'm talking about. Alright, well, I think I've seen pretty much everything there is to see in terms of... Ooh, kind of like this, maybe. Nice coffee cup, Gettysburg dress written on it. Okay, I can definitely get done with that. I'm not going to, but I could. I like it. Alright. I think I've seen just about everything there is to see in here. So I'm going to make my way out. Like I said, I still got to get to that train station, so that is going to be my next stop after I leave here and figure out where it is I'm actually going. All right, back outside. Just finished out the, uh, the museum part of it, heading to the train station part of it, which actually is right here. So this is right where we walked past the first time around, so I'm excited for that. I'm um, just going to, man, it's nice out here. It's nicer than it was before. The wind's died down a little bit. It's not nearly as blustery as it was. So uh, just quick thoughts on there. I know I gave some inside, but uh, now that I'm outside, I want to talk a little bit more about it. The museum's pretty great. I um, I don't know what I was expecting. I don't know if I was expecting more of Abraham Lincoln, just the president being featured or what, but I was really, I was surprised by how much Abraham Lincoln, the person that was in that museum. And I thought that was really cool. How it, uh, it highlighted his wife and it highlighted their kids and I don't know, I just thought that was really interesting and an aspect that I was not really expecting. So like I said, inside right now I'm kind of heading towards the, heading towards the train station, which is supposed to be also home to the, um, like set pieces and prop pieces that were used in the Lincoln movie. So I'm gonna go check that out. And so I have a whole segment, so I'm going. Right, that was it. So uh, spent all of about, I don't know, five, 10 minutes inside there. <laughs> you know, unless you're a really big fan of that movie, go ahead and save that $3. Um, they had some prop pieces, some set pieces that were worn by, uh, by Sally Field. Uh, she played Mary Todd Lincoln in the movie, so they had some of the dresses that she wore. They had a few of the set pieces, the prop pieces they used in the movie. And then other than that, I just really just clips up the movie kind of playing throughout the entire uh, entire station. So I mean, it's themed, if you want to call it that, to, uh, to Abraham Lincoln and the movie Lincoln, but really that was about it. So that was, I mean, that's it. That's, uh, we've seen it. Um, we saw the museum, the library is closed today, so we can't go in there, but from what I hear, there's not that much to see in there anyway. Um, the museum is obviously the highlight. 
the train station was cool i guess i would like to maybe explore more of the station itself not necessarily the lincoln stuff and with that i'm heading back to the car i'm gonna do a quick google search to see what else there is to do um while you're in springfield since i'm here and you know searching for stuff to do anyway other than that first things first i know for a fact i'm gonna get something to eat before i leave out of here so um i don't know let's go uh, back to the car run a quick search on the phone and see what we can figure I out i found the one other thing i wanted to do before i left springfield you can kind of see it behind me right there that is the tomb of abraham lincoln so i'll walk up there in just a second there are a few kind of monumenty type things around here that i want to stop and take a look at first make my way up the stairs approaching the tomb itself i mean obviously there's a striking resemblance to the washington monument in washington dc can't very can't see it that great i would assume the the statues you see on the outside are dedicated to the uh the men who fought in the civil war all right so this is the So the figure in the middle is Abraham Lincoln. The document in his hand I have to assume is the emancipation. The Gettysburg Address, who knows how to be The soldiers have got to be those from the Civil War. And this would be the actual tomb of Abraham Lincoln, so his, his body and everything would be buried inside there. Alright, that's going to do it for me today. Um, just got done walking through the tomb, which you saw. I'm back at the car now, and I'm about to head back and start driving back to St. Louis. But I don't know, before I do, I just want to kind of just reflect a, a little bit on, um, I don't know, it's the trip itself, right? So what inspired me to come out of here in the first place is just it being President's Day weekend. You know, of the weekend, we really kind of, we, we pay respect to all the presidents, but really the ones that were kind of censored on are George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. Those two guys are born uh, both in the month of February, so they just kind of like censored their two birthdays and picked this weekend as the weekend we kind of observe that. And I don't know, for me, it really, it makes me think about just Lincoln the man. I talked about it inside the museum itself, and it's important for us to remember now that there's been 45 different presidents of the United States, that every single one of them have just been men 
right? And I'm not, that's not a commentary on the fact there have been no women, even though that's you know, its own little thing. There probably should have been. But it's more of a commentary on the fact they are all just men. They are men doing the things that human beings do, uh, interacting and trying, I like to think, as best they possibly can to be the best versions of themselves that they can be in the best representation uh, and best representatives of the country that they can be. And it's very easy a lot of times to be cynical and it's very easy to to pick sides when it comes to uh, political debates and when it comes to the, the people that are in charge. But it really speaks to the the ideals of this country and that the first president, you know, in George Washington was not somebody who was elected by the people. He was somebody who uh, was nominated to be the first representative of this country without really any kind of um, any kind of uh, parameters for what that was supposed to look like. He could have served until the day he died if he wanted to. He elected to step down and to leave that position of power and to pass it along to the next guy who came along and John Adams and Thomas Jefferson and, and so on and so on. And these guys that have continued this long line uh, of presidential successors all the way up until the modern era. And it really speaks to the testament that when you walk through a tomb like the one we just saw to Abraham Lincoln, or you walk through the museum to Abraham Lincoln, how important the legacy that some of these men leave behind really is. That it's not just, they're not just placeholders, they're not just working a job for three years, or I'm sorry, they're not just working a job for four years or eight years, and then they're done. But these guys have an indelible impact to history. They're remembered you know, uh, 150 years after their death, that people are still coming out there and visiting their tombs and visiting museums dedicated to them. So um, it was definitely worth the trip. If you get the opportunity, go ahead and drive the, the 30 or hour and a half out here. Go ahead and pay the $12 to walk through the museum. The, um, the cemetery part right here is free, costs nothing. I mean, it's definitely worth the see. Uh, I mentioned inside, it's definitely worth repeating. The representations of slavery inside the museums are the best I have seen. Um, to my knowledge, there is no museum dedicated solely to slavery. I know there is an African American museum that's opened up in Washington, D.C. Um, in the last, shoot, maybe just in the last year or two. Um, I have not been to yet, but definitely anything that exists, I've never walked through any museum that depicted slavery the way that this museum depicts it. And it's very real, it's very just in your face and dramatic and truthful. And I don't know, it's just so important part of American history that definitely needs to be talked about more. So um, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it here. I got a long drive back to St. Louis. I gotta stop and get myself something to eat along the way. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you really got something out of this. I know I did, I really got a lot. Um, look forward to more videos in the future this is kind of like the president's day edition of jason tours historic places but i really want to start kind of building a series around st louis kind of working from the ground up um, i mentioned on the drive out here i want to visit coquia mounds uh one of these days so i think that's gonna be my next video is really just kind of starting with st louis what it looked like um at its roots and allowing it to kind of build up so you guys can see the progression of the city so uh with that i'm out of here have a great rest of your weekend, everybody. Have a great President's Day. Have a great day off, and I'll see everybody on Tuesday. So long.